Awakening souls to our life in Christ. My name is Mike Q. Daniel, and we are celebrating all that we have in Christ Jesus by grace. Be sure to share your questions or prayer requests at MikeQDaniel.com. And I want to welcome you to Mike Q. Daniel Live with the Grace Tribe. Let me ask y'all a question. What has value? What do you have that's maybe a, a favorite thing? Do you have a, a, a favorite cup or a favorite book or a favorite pair of socks? Maybe you have, let me set this down before I break something. <laughs> do you have a, a favorite hat or a shirt or something? Something that you love? Favorite pair of shoes? Uh, favorite golf club? I don't know. Do you have something that is your favorite? I bet you have a favorite something, and I bet right now you know right what it is and where it is right now. Maybe it's a pet. Um, maybe it's uh, a photograph. But if you've ascribed some treasure value to that thing, you you know what it is. You know where it is. You, you know, where does something get value and what do you do with something that you give that kind of value to? Whatever it is, it's going to be valuable because of the value that you give it, right? Your, your favorite sock or mug or uh, hat, uh, it, it's because you choose it to be that for you. You tried it and you liked it and you decided that you liked it. The, the photo that you keep looking at, you've ascribed value to it because of the memory, because of uh, what it means to you, because of how it looks. Maybe it's very artistic and so you like it. Whatever it is, you've ascribed value. You've given it value. And so if you got up tomorrow and that shirt no longer fit or you decided that hat didn't look good on you or, or that golf club doesn't work for you anymore, you, you wouldn't be ascribing that value to it anymore, right? It's only valuable because you've decided its value to you. It's valuable because of the value that you place on it. God's done this incredible thing. David in Psalm 62, verses 7 and 8 says, My salvation and my honor. What makes me safe and what gives me value. My salvation and my honor depend on God. He's my rock and my refuge. Trust in him at all times. You know, he doesn't just say to trust in him. He's saying that he, I'm dependent upon him to keep me safe, right? To make me secure, to give me salvation. I'm dependent upon him for the honor, the value, the cherishing. What he does with me is protective because he honors me. I'm dependent upon him for that. He's my rock. He, because he values me, he's my refuge. I'm secure. I'm safe. Because of the value he ascribes to me, he keeps me safe. So we trust in him at all times, you people. He says, pour out your hearts to him. See, we can pour out to him because of his value of us, his interest, his concern, his adoration, his affirmation, his value toward us means we get to pour out our hearts to him. See, he cares about us for God is our Refuge. You should go and read it. Psalm 62, 7 and 8. David is saying that it depends. These things that we have depend upon him. You don't cause your salvation. It depends upon God. You don't cause your own honor. It's not what you earn from him. It's what you're dependent upon him for. If it depends upon him, then if he doesn't do it, guess what? It doesn't happen. This teacup no matter how valuable it is, 
or this. I pulled out one of my favorite books, this book. Uh, it's a C.S. Lewis anthology. It has some of his best work, some of my favorite in it. Well, this book, I value. So because of that, I keep it on a shelf where it has a glass door and some of the things that I value the most, some of my keepsakes. This teacup is in a, uh, we don't have a, a, a lot of things like this, but we have some saucers and teacups and a couple of plates in a, uh, a, a china hutch that, that has a glass door and a lock, and I'm not sure the lock works, but it's, it's, it's kept because it's treasured. It's secured because it's treasured. It's protected because it's treasured. He's saying if it depends upon God, then if he doesn't do it, it's not getting done. This teacup cannot protect itself. If I value it, I put it in the, the hutch. I hold it with two hands. I'm careful with it. I pull it out on fancy occasions. We treasure it so we protect it. It's either going to be protected by me or it's not going to be protected. It's either going to be valued by me or it's not going to be valued. And if I value it, then I protect it. But both of those things are going to have to come from me. If I decide this is worthless, guess what? It's not going to be protected. I'm just going to toss it aside and it's going to get trampled under by, you know, anybody walking by. But because I ascribe value to it, I put it in a safe place. I keep it in a place where it is treasured, where I can enjoy it and use it for its purpose when I want it. It's special to me, so I keep it special to me. If it depends upon God, then he has to do it. If he doesn't do it, it's not getting done. My salvation, David is saying, and my honor, what, what brings me value, what elevates me, it depends upon God. He's got to do it or it's not going to happen. He's my mighty rock, my refuge. Trust in him at all times, you people. Pour out your hearts to him, right? He values you and treasures you uh, for he is our refuge. He's going to keep us safe because he's the one that's given us the value and he's the one that's given us the safety in the first place. It's amazing to me that we say, you know, salvation as if it's just some ethereal spiritual thing. What keeps you safe? What keeps you safe? What does safety look like to you? Salvation just means kept safe, made safe. Have you been made safe? Has God made you safe? How would you live if you really believed He's made you safe. He has secured you. He is your protection and refuge. So much of our strife today is based on fear, isn't it? We're uh, responding to circumstances out of fear and insecurity. We're defensive out of our need to feel secure about ourselves, to justify what we think might keep us safe or give us value. It's this defensiveness and insecurity, these fears turned upside down uh, that can only come from him. And so we're desperately trying to secure ourselves and protect ourselves and defend ourselves and justify ourselves. And all of that comes out of fear. What if we knew we were secure, safe, saved, by him who gives us honor and keeps us safe. Not only does it only come from him so that we can feel secure and stop living out of insecurity, but since it comes from him, it's not coming from anywhere else. And we can take hold of this idea that if he's not going to do it, if it depends upon him, then he's got to do it. And if he's not going to do it, it's not going to get done. It depends upon him. So listen, not only do I believe he's kept me safe, but I believe there is no other safety. It's got to be from him. What about honor? What about our honor, our worth, our value? Are you cherished by God? Does he honor you? Does he give you Value? Does he ascribe to you worth? Are you the cherished treasure, the beloved of God? 
you know, these are kept behind a cabinet. It's not just that I like to use them, it's that because they're valuable to me, they have their own place. They're special. They're actually most valuable to my wife, but what's valuable to her is valuable to me. Isn't that wonderful? What's valuable to you is valuable to God. Should you see less value in yourself than he does? A false humility, feeling, oh, I have no value, I have no worth, I, I, there's nothing valuable about me, it's all God and not me. If I deny the very value that he ascribes to me, then why would I ever trust him for my salvation? <laughs> Should you see yourself as less valuable than the value that Christ has ascribed to you? In marriage conferences, I often compare uh, husbands uh, at, to uh, like a canteen. This is a Yeti cup, something else treasured by my wife. This big old heavy duty, keeps cold, keeps hot, could take a bullet, throw it in your backpack, throw it in your car, throw it in your backseat. It, it's uh, this heavy duty, utilitarian kind of cup. Men are like canteens, I say. And wives, husbands are like canteens and wives are like teacups. Well, which of these do you think has greater value? Which one of these needs protection? Is this more valuable because it's sturdier? Or is this more valuable because it's fragile? So when I do marriage conferences, I talk about, you know, men are like canteens, women are like teacups, that they are our... When, when Paul describes our wives as weaker vessels, he doesn't mean weak like they can't do anything. He means precious, worth caring for, something worthy of tenderness. We're called the bride of Christ. Do you think he cherishes us less than we're called to cherish husbands to wives? He's the one that gets it done. We're the ones that he ascribes value and protects and cherishes and keeps and has a special place and a special use for. For me to take this cup and this saucer and put it in its cabinet behind a locked thing and, and pull it out only when it's going to be used for the purpose for which it is made and for which I treasure it. Listen, that's the very essence of holiness. It is set apart for its purpose. It is kept and secured, designed, and edified for the very purpose for which it has been made. So again, that false humility that kind of undermines his glory of grace in your life is us seeing less value, our denying the value that God has ascribed to us. That doesn't glorify him, say, oh, I have no value, it's all his value, but he is the one that values you. God is the one who values you. He's not wrong. You have value to him. He gets to decide what you're worth to him, and he did with the blood of Jesus Christ. You're worth that. He is happy with what he got for what he paid and what he got was eternal relationship with you, and he cherishes you. He has kept you. He has secured you. That It's a false humility, again, that undermines his glory by grace in your life that says, I'm not as valuable as God treats me. He's just pretending because he's nice. Isn't his grace that good? Doesn't his grace glorify him? in our lives, God cherishes you. You don't have to tell yourself some haughty affirmation of how great you are. I'm not saying, oh, I'm great. I'm wonderful. I'm good. I do great things. Forget that. How about telling yourself that you are cherished, precious, built up, designed, intricate, adored, valued, secured, kept, Beloved of Christ. How about you tell yourself who you are to him? Because who, do you, who you are to him, my friends, who you are to him is who you are, period. 
who you are to Jesus Christ, his beloved bride, his teacup, cherished, delicate, beautiful, artistic, special, beloved, unique, secured. Who you are to him, that's just who you are, period. Got to be careful with that. <laughs> so tell yourself that you're cherished and precious and built up and specially and perfectly designed for the purposes for which he's called you to know and experience him as he utilizes you in the way that brings him great joy in honoring who he has made you to be. You're the beloved of Christ. His grace to make you so is his glory. It is how he's exalted. His grace to you, Ephesians 2, 6 says, is his kindness. His glory is his kindness, his riches in kindness toward you. It's his grace that glorifies him. So if we deny what his grace accomplishes, we're robbing him of his glory in our own experience. Let me say that again. If we're denying the effectiveness of his grace and his kindness and what it effectively has done in my life, then we're denying the very glory of God by that grace in our experience. Receive it to the glory of God today. Listen, he's got you safe and secure in Christ. He is the one upon whom you're dependent. You didn't do very well today. You don't always act like his precious beloved teacup. That, that's not how you got that value. If uh, I leave this out, which I will not do, but if I leave this out overnight and sitting up here in my office and Stacy goes looking for it tomorrow, just because this isn't where it's supposed to be to do what it's designed to do for whoever she's going to serve it to, if this doesn't make it into the lineup the next time we're serving tea, which doesn't happen that often, but it, if it doesn't make it, it doesn't make it any less valuable. It's not up to the teacup to be in the right place to do the right thing to cause the value we ascribe the value to it. And if it's lost, we're going looking for it because we will keep it and cherish it and utilize it according to its design. What I'm not going to do is throw this in the back of my car. What I'm not going to do is throw this in my backpack. What I'm not going to do is, you know, care, try to shove this in my pocket as I board a plane somewhere, right? That's what the utilitarian special designed... This is what the groom does, right? Get stuff done, dependable, takes a bullet to protect the teacup. That's the, that's the relationship of Christ to us. He does it, and it ascribes value to us. So he's got you safe and secure in Christ. He adores you. He gives you honor. He honors you with his adoration, with his affection with his wanting at great price to be with you. And we need to stop calling him wrong about the value he places on us. So you are precious to God. Go ahead and say it. You are cherished by God. I am cherished by God. I am precious to my heavenly father. That, my friends, will change your day. That's going to draw your focus. To be beloved and know I'm beloved will draw my thoughts and focus and intentions into that relational dynamic with him where his grace meets my faith, his uh, sufficiency meets my receptivity, his empowerment meets my willingness. That's grace and faith to the glory of God. So it will change your day to receive your belovedness is true. You're beloved whether you receive it or not, but you're not going to experience what you don't believe in your own life. So it will change your day. It will draw your focus. It will grow you up in a more mature relationship with Christ, the groom of the bride that is the church. It will empower you to love as you've been loved, to treat others as the beloved of God that they are to love like crazy just like you are i hope that that encourages you today my hope is that you will embrace 
the great things of this life that you enjoy as God's gifts to you, as a token of his enjoyment of you, a token of his affection to you. Because the books and the teacups and the yetis and the cars and the music and the guitars and the whatever, the paintings, all of the beauty of this life and all of the hardship of this life are not the substance of life in and of itself. They're meant to draw us into the dependence of Christ, who is our refuge, who is the one who we depend upon for honor and salvation, for security and value. Be encouraged today because it, it was his intention from the very beginning to give us value at his expense so that we would be willing to receive in light of his love, receive that love and walk in that relationship, trust him with our lives that in every moment of every day, his kindness and richness and grace toward us would be to his glory in your life. We don't cause his glory. We're the recipients of his grace, which is his glory in us. So know him like that today. It's worth knowing him who loves you like that. So know him today. Grow in grace today and go love like crazy today because you, my friends, are cherished of God. Have a fantastic rest of your days. Thank you for joining us. See you in the next broadcast, live Tuesday, Thursday, and then these uh, Sunday sessions each Sunday morning, all at 8 a.m. Central Time. Love you guys. Have a fantastic rest of your day.